we'll talk about navigation 1.0, then navigation 2.0. So what is navigation in Flutter? Navigation in Flutter is basic, in basic terms is how you move from one screen to another in your Flutter app. Flutter has both the imperative and declarative mechanism of navigation. Both of these mechanisms can be used together in an app. Okay, so um, the first line, basically, what um, in simple terms, what um, navigation means is we are moving from one screen to another. For example, your um, your Facebook app when you want to log in after um, play, um imputing your username and your password, you press the login button, then it takes you forward. That is navigation. Then if you press your logout button too, it takes you back to the login screen. That's moving backward. That's also navigation. So what's basically what we're doing in Flutter in navigation is um just you move forward and we'll move backward. Okay, so um the imperative and declarative mechanism there. So um the imperative, imperative um programming or imperative approach is um, a kind of programming approach where we make up our focus on the process. We follow guidelines, patterns, step by step, and we try to compile things in order for from where the um, correct answer will be from. Okay, so what this uh, the imperative approach means is just um, you are following the process, meaning um, from your login screen when you type your username and your password from your login screen, you move to the um, to your own page then from your own page you can just press your um any button then it's going to okay using um the, i'm not really familiar with facebook um platform but let's see since we, most of us are familiar with facebook platform then when you post um press the um home yes when you press the home it takes you to the home screen then when you go to press you want to um, create a post or when you post a when you want to post the uh post yeah, you click on um, the button to like it's, it's process is it, gradual from your login, you enter your um username and your password to, to your home screen. Then okay, let me use the view profile here then to view profile. When you click on your view profile, it takes you moves you forward and forward like that. That um imperative program you you follow guidelines, you do it step by you, it is patterned step by step. While the declarative programming is a kind of programming on approach where we mainly focus on our desired out output or what would be the result in respective of the process. So um, in declarative programming, or you don't need to, um, so from your, once you, once you log in, you, you don't really need to um, follow the step-by-step -step approach. Once you just press the button, it takes you directly to where you want to go. So, but in Flutter, um, we make use of these um, two, Mechanism in our app is you can you can use both mechanism um, the navigation 1.0 and the navigation 2.0 which we are still going to talk about. Then um, basic navigation for basic navigations in our Flutter app we use the navigation method imperative to navigate to new screens. Okay, so I think in, in the first class um, I have a question. Yes. Can do we do we know the difference between um, a method and a function? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> do you mind telling us? Okay. Um, a function is like a block is a block of code that we used to write code to avoid repeatability. Then the method is like a function in a class. So it's like a method you can use. You can access the method from a class. So it's just like a function where you need it in the, inside the class. That's understand. Okay. Does, does anybody have a contrary opinion? Or oh, another answer different from ours? Okay, yeah, she's correct. Um, a method. A method is a function you call um you, you um create or you call inside a class. Well, the function is um it is, it is outside of a class. It is in um independent. A function is independent of a class. 
Okay, let's on. Okay. Okay, so um the imperative method now these are the step by step um step by step methods in the um navigation in flutter navigation um the navigation is the function while um the method these are the methods here are some methods we use it in with the navigation function we have the dot push the dot pop the dot push replacement and the dot push named so for um the dot push dot push basically what dot push does is um it just it pushes or it navigates you to a new screen page or a new um yeah a new screen page so for example when you press your login button you're still using the facebook example after inputting your username and your password when you press the um when you click on the login button it pushes you to the next screen you know, it pushes you to the next screen that's um inside the um the button there when you tap the button it's called this method dot push, then pushes you to the next screen. It's just like a stack. Um, we are going to explain this. Well, we're going to be like like a stack. Like when you push dot push, when you, um when a user clicks, a user clicks on the widget. That's like an interactive widget. Yeah, when a user clicks on it, it's sort of like um a text button, or yeah, a text button. When user clicks on it, it's um it adds a new screen to it, then it stacks again, just like in a stack. It adds a new screen, a new screen, a new screen, a new screen, like on top, on top, on top, on top, like that. Then the dot pop, what dot pop what it does is it's for going back. Dot pop is for um going back from the current page. When you um when you For example, when the oh, oh, sorry, my charger just blew. Now <laughs> I'm very sorry. Okay, so when um the dot um when you click on the dot pop, you are going to, you are going to um you are leaving the current page and going to the back. So um on the stack, still using the stack example, it's going to pop the screen. It's going to um the um the most um the topmost elements or the topmost screen. It's going to be popped out of the stack, then to leave you to the next screen. Um, <clears throat> that's um, basically what the dot push and dot pop is. Okay, I'm still, I'm still going to give um, examples, or we're going to try and see how it looks. Then for the dot push replacements, what dot basically what dot push replacement does is, okay, um, first be able to um, okay similar to dot push replacement is similar to dot push but deleting it it replaces the current roots um with a string okay so a push replacement what it does it um it replaces the current roots and then it, it redirects you to um another um another root entirely not um all explain it now not um currently the screen or not i'm um, not um in not necessarily the next screen, but it takes you to it, it replaces the screen and takes you to another place such that um when you on the stack you can't you can't go back to where you're coming from. Okay, let me give you um an example. When we um log in using still using the same Facebook example when we log in, then um when we press, I think um the yeah, um I can't really remember the place now. Um those Dot, dot 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 like six dots if i can remember the, um facebook platform but when you i'm what i'm trying to um the feature i'm trying to talk about is the logout feature like irrespective of anywhere you can you would be in your facebook app or irrespective of where you, anywhere you've navigated to or uh, so many screens that you've gone you've been to in, in your facebook app when you click on the dot push replacement it, it immediately takes you back to the login screen. It takes you back to the login screen, not um not considering the fact that okay, you've you um you've gone to you you are in a group or you were you were commenting on under a group or somewhere, or maybe you've moved. So what's um basically what dot push replacement does is um it replaces the current route. So navigation back to the 
older route will not be possible. It just takes a screen. When you click on the button, it, it goes to the screen of um, where you sent it to, like the logout button. When you log out, it just takes you back to the login screen again to re login back inside. Then for the push dot named, sorry, so far, do you guys get the dot push dot pop dot push replacement? Um, no, I do not understand. Hello? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm with you. Okay, you mentioned something on route when you're trying to explain that what is route? You said you should take it to another route entirely. So I didn't get your question. Okay, when you're explaining the push to this way, what do you have to understand that instead of it being stuck from like the first page to the second page, it takes it just like when you click on it, it takes you to another page. So you mentioned something on it changing from one route to another route. So I don't explain I don't understand the concept of it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me take it again. So um the push replacements, like I said, um it's similar to the dot push. Um what dot push actually does it, it's it's when you when you um, click on a button, it pushes you to the next screen. Like when you click on the login button, and it takes you to home. Then when you click on um view profile, it takes you to your profile. But somewhere somewhere in um in um view profile, there will be a logout button. Okay, I, I can remember. Okay, um somewhere in, um in. Yeah, in your view profile, there's going to be a logout. Um, there's going to be a login um button on sorry, a logout button. So like that's where um the push replacement um happens when you it it replaces the current route so that the navigation okay it replaces the current route such that once as many when the fifth stack now when the um when the fifth screen on the stack. Normally, what you, when you press um, the back button, it's just um, going to pop. Then go to the um, fourth screen. But um, when you use um, dot dot push replacement, what it's going to do is just it's going to pop when you it's going to um, pop the screen, but it's going to go back to like um, the zero um, this um, zero screen, like the um, the root screen, instead of going back to um, the fourth screen. You get me now. Yes, so that means once you the push replacement, just like scatters it and go goes back to the what, initial, and starting the route and going back to the initial thing. That gets yeah, not necessarily initial, but you uh, yes, let's yes initial, but not necessarily initial too. I just use the um the login and logout for example, so I'll be able to get it, but not necessarily initial. Do you, do you understand me? Yes. Okay. Is there any other question? Thank you. What about the pop, sir? Dot pop. Yes. Okay. So what dot pop does is it just um it destroys. Okay, can you still remember we talked about um um destroying of screens and rebuilding of screens so what um dot pop does is on the stack what maybe um when you click next 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 it gives you screen one screen two building like a stack screen two is on top of screen one screen three is on top of screen two screen four is on top of screen three so what the when um what dot, dot pop does is it pops out screen four just take screen four out then you, we have screen three on the stack then it pops up um screen screen three. We have screen two on the stack. Just for example, okay, I think WhatsApp, I think I am I'm more familiar with WhatsApp. When um you're on your screen, um your profile, your profile um picture um when you when you're on your profile picture. Oh no, okay, let me use the um group example. When you're in a group and you're trying to check for um check, try to view the group um icon or group image, then when you click on back on your button. It takes you back to the group chat. When you, when you click on back again, it takes you back to your normal chats. Now when you click on back again, 
it takes you out of WhatsApp. So it pops, 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 pops. And that's how it does pops work. Thank you, sir. Okay, <clears throat> you're welcome. Okay, so um dot push um push dot push named. So um dot push named or what um okay dot push named um works with the um uh, with the format or with the um with the yeah with the style of um named roots named roots so what name named roots what name root does or what name allows it it allows you to change the path by using string so instead of providing um the component classes what's this what um basically what um dot push name um, does is for example instead of us using um dot push you can just say dot push name then you tell it um the specific screen or oh, no not the specific screen now like the screen in string i think we'll take an example of it we'll be able to understand it better that way so what um you um you may want to ask why because um actually dot push named dot push name is the same thing is the same um is dot the same function as the dot push then there's another one also there is a dot push replacement named also so what's you may if you want to ask um why dot push why do you have dot push and dot push named so um the answer is um when you use dot push named is um it helps you it enables you to um reuse your code it um it's it improves um code reusability we're still going to see it in the example instead of you having to press a material page root and dot context dots we're still going to see it having to put material page root or context dots um the class name of the string all you need to do is just material page new um push push replacement named or push named context and okay i think okay i think we should be able to see it better here so what i'm i was trying to um say was explain was instead of you can see my course so, um navigation dot push context um command material page root builders widgets everything like this now what um navigator dot push named is going to do is when you have when you just get to navigation dot pushed context comma then everything here you give it a string value everything from material here to the end of this um widget but um the bracket here just bracket here it's going to give in a string value so all you need to do is you want to just get to um context comma then just give it a string value with that it saves you having to write material page root builder widgets and everything like that and which saves and helps code reusability so are, are, we, are you with me yes yes sir you want to say something is that a question Oh, yeah, yeah. Push name, would it on stack like? I didn't get the question. I mean, does the push name, does it stack the string? Let me say the string. Like from one, from to one, to two. does it stack them? Yes, it, it, it actually does the same thing. It does the same thing. The only difference is instead of you having to write material, page routes, um, builder, widget, everything like this. You can just put it in a string and just put um, comma home page. You get? Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, yeah, the, and that thing is um, for you to be able to um, name your roots. Like if you have, um, if you want to go to the home, home, home page, you want to go to the login screen, you want to go to the um to the view profile screen, it helps you um be able to okay know that okay, yes. We are going to the um yes, and for code readability too, it helps for it. Okay, so, um let's take some examples, shall we? Yes. Oh, <clears throat> okay, so 
Okay, uh, yeah, we're going to take some examples, but I would love, okay. But let me just finish um navigation point 1.0 so you were able to um understand what I'm saying better before we take some examples. Okay, so um navigation 1.0 in other versions of Flutter, it's supposed to be of Flutter, there was a certain way we handle navigation. We basically push and pop routes to the navigation stack with either a named route or an anonymous route. Examples of anonymous routes. Okay, this is um we can see here. Uh, um when you this is on press button. On press is always um with either a button or a text or a um a gesture, just any interactive widget. Any interactive widget is going to have an on press button. What this page does is it's um navigation or push context material page routes. It takes you to the detailed screen, detailed screen. Is that what it does? Then when you click on another button, this on press also takes you to um it takes out of the screen dot pop dot context. So this is um what I've been explaining since this is this is in the slide. When you click on dot push, you click on dot push, detail screen comes up. Then we have the home screen under. That's the stack I was talking about. Then when you click on dot pod, the detail screen gets popped away. Then you can be able to see the home screen. Okay, yeah. So this is an example of using named roots. So what um said is it's basically the same thing happening in this um, previous slides. Using using name roots, it's basically the same thing that happened in this previous slides. The only thing is the difference is we're not using material, page routes, builder, context, return, detailed screen. All we need to do is to just navigator dot push name context comma details. Then just it knows that okay, yes, yeah, so I'm going to take you to the detail screen. Yeah. So for it to be able to know that um we are going to use the um we're going to give it um give it the command in the um material app and the material app widget now the yeah, um, where we have the route um the route here then what um the, basically what um the route does is um the route is a map with strings string keys and values such as builders that are passed to the route property on material app so what um the route here does is a key. We have the um we have the value and the key. We have the value and the key. Um, the key is the um the um dash. Sorry, sorry. While it's map, sorry, while it's while it maps to the context and the home screen in the material app widgets. Okay, so we're still going to check about how that works also. Okay, so that brings us to um navigation 2.0. Okay, but um before we get to navigation 2.0. Okay, let me let me just let me take navigation navigation 2.0 also. So Navigation 2.0. Um, the Navigation 2.0 API adds to new classes to the frame. Adds new okay. Add new classes to the framework in order to make app screens a function of the app state and to provide the ability to face routes from the underlying platform like web URLs. While an overview. Okay, so here's an overview of what's new. Okay, so basically what um Navigation 2.0 um talks about is um we all okay so okay then let me conclude we all know okay so um can someone explain to me um or can someone ask why is um flutter a um cross-platform application
um, maybe maybe it can be used for both Android and iOS. From the understanding of what you told us in the introductory introductory class. Okay, exactly. Yes, you can use you can use to build um iOS apps and Android apps. Yes. So you can actually you can also use for that to build web apps too. So like there was um um there was this problem of of having to um navigate using the web, you know, on the web when you're using a web page, <clears throat> you bet you don't really um have to dot pop. There is not really Okay, the back button like that is not really that function now compared to sorry. Okay. Back button not really that function now compared to uh when we are using it's uh um, when we're using our mobile phones. So please am I communicating? Yes, sir. Okay, so um when on the web you can just click on um um something then it just takes you to another page entirely then you click on another page again it just takes you to pages 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 like that then you may even, um you will probably get lost in the stack so like that's why um the um the flutter team since they they supported um flutter for the web so they are trying to add more support for the um web flutter web so um we're going to be running flutter web today also so um that what brought in um navigation 2.0. Then it brought in um so more other classes like the the pages, the router, the page information facer, the router delegate, the back button dispatcher. Okay, so this is navigation 0 2.0 explained using the diagram. So We are from the initial route to the root information provider to the root information passer. Okay, so um, this is just a diagram. I'm sorry, this is just a diagram. From what you said in this slide, I said um, for this class, we're not going independently into navigation 2.0. So take note of that. So I think I've, I've, take, I've taken note of that already. So yeah, I'm not really sure. So I'm, I'm not going to really explain um, this diagram on or everything on that navigation 2.0 since we're not really that's not like is that not is not in the syllabus. Did I guys with me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So um, let's now go back to. Sorry, I'm trying to. Yeah, let's let's now go back to taking some examples. Okay, so we're starting from navigation dot pop. Okay, navigation dot push, navigation dot um pop. Then we try using navigation dot push replacement. Then we'll try. We we'll also try our hand with navigation dot push replacement named or and navigation dot push named. Okay, so um so they won't be using that part. We'll be using um VS VS Code. So I hope we've um we all saw the video I sent on how to install Android Studio on VS Code. Um well I've been able to install the Android Studio and the VS Code, but the flutter is not straightforward. Same here, I'm having issue with Flutter too. But I've installed Android Studio and VS Code. But you're having issues installing Flutter, yeah? Yes. Yes. Like it's not straightforward. And that's okay, why the shell is not running on my laptop. Okay. So um so that um won't have the same problem with elastic. I'm choosing to use VS Studio Code, so I won't be able to um really explain what's happening with Android Studio. But 
for when you opened your VS code, you were able to did you see something? Did you open like this? Um, yeah, I've been able to like connect. This is an extension for Flutter on VS Code. Have you? Okay, you're able to connect with the extension? Yes. Yeah, that means you are good to go then. Okay. But I'm having issues. I was yeah, able was to issue. connect to the extension and I was able to write the code, but I couldn't run the code. So maybe there is something I still need to install on the system. I don't get it. Yeah, that's true. I was not able to run the code. It was before like connecting this extension though. The one that we're doing on that part on the web. Like I tried to like run it using this Visual Studio, the normal Visual Studio without the extension of this. But that that part, the extension I like installed it before running the code. And I did it the way you said we should do it, but then it didn't still run. It didn't run. Oh, <clears throat> oh, okay. And there was no response. No just response showing, from? Uh, just showing blank in the terminal. So there is no output for the program. Okay, let me quickly run through that. I think the main issue is yeah, the, uh, the... that part. The, that part. Yeah, so um the there's a different way you run um you run code when you run your code on that part, it's different from the way you run it in not like it's different, but like yes, yes, let me diff I would I don't really use the word different, but actually it's different. Yeah, let me, let me just use the word different in the sense that um like um, you have to run when using when you're using that part. Yeah, it's easier to run it in that part where you just um have to just press your run button and and it just runs like that. But but um in okay, I think as we go on, you guys, I'm not trying, I'm not getting the words correctly now. But as we go on, I would explain it better. Okay, so um to solve the problem, um we can just search for Flutter. Yes, put install. Again, okay, like Flutter has a documentation of how to install Visual Studio Code. Okay, so This is how to set up an edit editor using Visual Studio Code. So after you've downloaded your Visual Studios, this is like when you click on this link, you download your Visual Studio. I think everybody has done that already. So once you start the Visual Studio Code, you invoke view command templates. So we'll go to view command templates. That's what I should do here. Then okay, let me read everything. So you we come into the screen. I'm coming going back. Then you type install. You type install, then select extensions, then you install the extensions. Okay, install extension, then you have to, you come back to type Flutter again in the extension search field, then select Flutter and delete and, and click install. Okay, so basically, this is what it's saying here. You come to view command templates and um, platelets, sorry, then extensions. Install extensions. When you click on extension, you search for the extension. Yeah, you search for Flutter. Okay, so I've installed Flutter, the extension, the Flutter extension. You can see it here. It comes up Flutter 3.0, 3.32.0. Then, so when you click on it, if you've not installed it, it's going to show you install. Then yes, when you click on it, it's going to install. So 
So did you guys get me? Yes, I'm going to try this. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so you should be able to, that should be able to solve your problem. Then after that, you should be able to have your, your Flutter extension working with your Visual Studio code. Okay, so um, creating a new Visual Studio, um, a new photo project in Studios. Creating a new project, you open the command um, platelet, then you select Flutter, new project, application, project, application. Okay, let's try that. So, Shift P. Okay. Shift P. Okay. The is opened now. Then you select float a new project. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out the float on new project command here. Let me close this um, project first. Okay.
I'm sorry for taking your time. Um, is it well? Yeah, Isaac, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So I'm having issues with opening a new project on VS Code. You can see my screen, yeah? Yes. Yeah. You're familiar with VS Code now? Yes, I am. Okay. View, yeah? You want to open the project? No, a new Flutter project. Okay. Uh, just create from your command prompt and then you navigate. Okay. You create the folder first in your, your directory. Any directory, just create the folder. Okay. Um, the view command so, is that I wanted to use that option. No. Okay, you can you can try that. Try. Yeah, but, no. but, but you see no. you see back tick from your laptop. One back tick like that. You can do command back tick. It's open a terminal. Okay, let me open a new oh, terminal. New terminal. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's open the terminal already. Then CD okay. to folder location. Yeah. As we have created the folder where you want to have the float up. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry guys. Um, okay, to be honest, I'm not used to um Total Studio. I just picked it up yesterday. I mean sorry, VS Code. I've always been using Android Studio. That's a, it's quite the variant is quite new to me too. For using with Flutter. Okay, so I have it in user. Is duplicated. He, sorry, I was always uh, um, put it in open Android Studio projects. Yeah. Okay. CD. Let me try to move this away from. Okay, so it's okay. So guys, thank you very much, Isaac. You're welcome, Chief. All right. So um um okay, uh, I was able to figure out using um creating a new Flutter project using the view um command petlets as um as that is the tutorial. But you can use another option using the um terminal. When you um, click the terminal, you click on the new terminal and then open this console to you for you here. Then you click on um, CD means um, file directory, like um, where um, command direct command directory where um, where you want um, where you want to navigate to, like where um, you want to navigate the folder where you want to navigate. So that's I want to save create the file in folder called my Android Studio project. Then just press CD, then copy. You copy the um the folder, the address, the directory of the, the address of your folder, then you paste it here. Then you will notice okay. Now we are currently in the Android Studio Projects folder. Then we can Run the code Flutter. You can use Flutter. 
plotter creates create then the name of the app you can call the app um ecx ecx c app oh, let me use this ecx app ecx app So it's, it's loading. It's loading the operating system. Okay, so like, did you guys notice something? So can you guys see my screen? Yes, I can see. Okay, so um, I made a mistake when I was trying to run um Flutter creates. Yeah, I did Flutter creates ECX. Then I used the capital letter. A in up, then it gave me an error. ECX up, up. Yeah. it's not a valid chat package. Okay, so um, we're not supposed to actually um, use a capital letter when we are creating our app name. Then when I use okay, sorry, I was supposed to ECX not EXC. Then when now it's, it's in cap, um small, is in um lower case, then it creates the app, and it's still creating the app. Okay, then it has created the app already. So if you, if you navigate to the folder here, you should be able to see. Now we got, we have the e e X, okay, so it's also ECX, but EXC app. Allow us to create a new um, Flutter project. Okay, um, we're all done. In order for you to run your application type, um, you can, in the directory cds if we're printing the directory to run the application we would use flutter run okay so flutter run okay so um when you're building you're not in the directory yet michael okay, okay yeah yeah thank you yes so i'll go back i'll go back to the directory Copy the address. Okay, no. Copy. Just put EXC up directly. It's going to be top, please. Okay, we're in the Okay. Okay. EX up. Okay. Then, yeah, we're in the directory now. Then, all you need to just um, plot our run. Okay, so since 
So I said a multiple device phone since um okay, basically since um we are going to be building a um mobile app here yeah, but I will have to debug on my phone since we can't debug um there's no way you guys will be able to see my phone now so we would have to use the option of debug um debugging on Chrome. So um our app now is going to run on Chrome. So it's be like it will be active. Um no, it will not it will be active now. It will we are going to be creating a web application. Okay. I'm sorry, we've not created the app yet, right? We've I've created it already. Ah, why is it? If you can see my screen well. Yeah, but it's not showing that, like the interface. Welcome. But there's no like. There's no sorry. Like it's just showing the welcome interface, and then it's okay. showing okay, yeah, sorry, that similar so, tag. Oh, okay. So it has created the app already. So um, all we need to just do is um. No, we're supposed to open it. All you just click on file, open folder, then go to the directory where it's created the app. Then the name of is exe app and select the folder. Okay, now that's going to. Okay. Okay, still showing this folder, but when you click on that, it should change. Okay. Then what, what the main file is going to be in LIB, LIB is for library, then main dot that. Yeah, so this is the code, this is everything um float when we run um float accurate it does for us. This is everything. Oh this is the code that's created. Okay. Yeah. So um we want to run our app. Then I should run. It's run the app. You go to the app. You want to run the app. If you press the terminal, you go to. Yeah, when you press the terminal. New terminal. New terminal, yeah. Then you bring it out here. No, no, it's going to bring it out here. Okay. Then you wait for it to be in the directory of where the app is. Then we use the um command. Uh, okay, so we have to write float down run. Yes. Okay, <clears throat> then you press one since we are running it on a Chrome device. Okay. 
So, so the reason why it's taking this long, sorry, the reason why it's taking this long because it's the first time we're running in the app. So on subsequent runs, um, it's not going to take this long. Um, sorry, he's wrong. What thing is saying it is bringing error like after writing that flutter run, it's bringing the term flutter is not recognized as the name of the CM delay function script file or operable program. Check the spelling of the name. Like, <sighs> oh, Robert. Flutter is not recognized as a keyword. Oh. Is that the error is given? Huh? Is that Flutter is not recognized as a some I didn't get it. Yeah, the name of of a CM delete. Well that's what I'm saying. Here. Function, script file, or operable program. Check the spelling of the name or if a part was included. Verify that the path is correct and try again. Okay. Um. Sorry. Can I say something to that? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So there's um something on if you are using Windows um system or if you have Windows OS on your laptop, there's something yeah. called um environment variables. So from okay. your search, like you're searching for an application, you yeah. just um, type environment variables and then open it. From it, it's okay. um, it's, it's seen that um, Flutter is not in that path on your environment variable, so you need to include it in the path. Just Google like um, okay. environment variables to add path and Flutter to path. You will see the link or what you type there, and that's all. So once you add it to path, then it will it will recognize it. That's all. Okay, I think I'll done that. Yeah, Michael, you can continue. Try. Oh yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take. Should I just cancel it then? Open another project? Or should we just wait for it to run the initial run? Just, just wait. Or you can okay. continue. Um, if you want to explain, uh, do you want to explain a project from ground up to them? Or no, um, it's still um project from VS um code. Okay. Okay, let's just do that. You don't have a military installed on your machine. Mm, no. Okay. My system and spec can carry it. Yeah, it's not I joined the class list. I don't know, maybe you have the same Mr. Mike I think it's the same Mr. Michael. This is brother. 
I'm just suggesting that maybe this thing is taking maybe too long. Can you just ask me if they have the emulator on their system? Because I'm able to taking our time of being Yes, I'm able to know emulator on my system and I can debug this debug the program. So just ask that they have the uh, debugging app on their system or something like that. So we can continue because this could be taking a long time. Okay, um, okay. I think it's, it's taking too long. Let me. Okay, let's. Oh, all right, thank you very much. I think let's continue. Why is it taking so long? Because I mean, it is initial run. Once uh, when you run it the first time initially. Okay, so I'm trying to I run. I created a project earlier today when I was trying to um, test the platform. So let me just open up that. Then it'll be easier to run here. Sorry, it's loading. Hello. Yeah, you see, can you hear you? Yeah, I'm saying something like, uh, because mine opened, I'm saying Flutter demo home page. You have pushed the button this many times zero. Is that what we are expecting? Yeah, hello. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 that was expected. Okay, float down. Should be faster now. So, <clears throat> maybe the system is beginning to hang. Okay. okay.
Okay, so let's go down around. Sorry, bisa kan ya ini? Yeah, I'm waiting for connection from the box service on Chrome. Uh, um, Michael, I think you should just continue. Leave this um the box to. That won't take time. Please, is there a WhatsApp group chat for this uh, for mobile developers? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, come and give me your question. I said, is there what's a good chat for this unit for mobile development? Okay, uh, um, there is. Are you talking about for ECX? No, for this yes, part, yes, yes. Black, um... Yeah, um, there is Slack, um, group, there is Slack channel. Uh, yeah, so no, aside this, like, that's where um, all the interaction goes on. That's okay, because no, no, I need no. to really ask for things and how to go through the setup. Because if I run some of this code, like the the demo code that's done, that comes with Fortran, I run it. You have to run on yeah. my Microsoft Edge instead of running on maybe like uh, that's it. The, I, I can't say the editor, the emulator, something like that. I don't know. So they, they said I I have to download the Android Studio and do the setup. I downloaded the Android Studio and then now to link SDK with Android Studio is not giving me problem. So I can't really make use of the emulator. But the emulator I'm using is on Microsoft Edge and it's giving me a desktop view instead of mobile view. So how can I do that? Okay. Yeah, so I would um, send the link on how to do that. Yeah, that like you um debugging on your mobile for um your on your um mobile your cloud device instead of um debugging on on a tablet or on the web. You can just um train, you can you can just uh, um, ask questions again on Slack. Okay, I remember though. Okay, um let's continue while we wait for connection from debug services on Sound. 
Okay, so if you guys can remember from our last class, we talked about widget, um, basic widget. Oh no, that's we talked about um, visible element widget. So visible element widget. This is um, an example of visible element widget is the text. Text button. This text button here. Um, Please, can others please help us hold their mic? Text widgets T XT. Out created text widget. Am I the only one? I can't, I can't hear, hear you. you. I can't hear you from here. So, I can't hear you from here. I think um, that should be his network breaking, sort of. Michael, are you there? An example uh, um I've said API Okay, to know more about a widget, a particular widget, you can search for the widget at um, api.plotter.dev. To know more about the behavior of the widget, to, uh, to know the properties or and um, functions or, or how the widget behaves, um, so it's loading. Yeah, um, API dot dev is loading. You can't hear anything. I can hear the mic, but your skin is not coming up. But can you hear me? Can I hear you? Yeah, 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 I'm here.
Sir, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yes, I okay. can hear you. Sir, yeah. so, <clears throat> so you guys, just bear with me. Um, my system is it's hanging already now. Can someone explain that change of religion? Hello? Yeah, what did you say? I didn't get that. Monsignor, can anybody explain that? A change of variable something for those that have got things to do, and some have not got things to do. It's not wrong. Change of what? Variable, environment variable. Oh, it's still not working. Probably after the class, then, um, we can um talk on the Slack channel. You just bring okay. it up. You can send a screenshot of your um, screen and, and work okay. on that. Mm. Mike, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm currently using my phone. Okay, okay, okay. Try to stop the Android Studio, um, the VS Code on your system, and switch to your phone and just share slides. And probably just do one or two explanations. Okay. No, we might still need to have a session with them, like. Very a practical session. I don't know so that we can um can make up for what what they are supposed to achieve for today. Yeah, maybe just continue with the slides. So. Okay, I think I'm done with the slides already. That was like, I I got I I finished the slides. Then just the practical session now. Okay. Okay. Probably should just reschedule for the practical session then. Yeah, maybe a day in the week, um, next week, not necessarily Friday. We can all agree on the time. And then um, myself, you, Michael, and the lead tutor, we can arrange for a practical session, maybe an hour, 30 minutes or two hours, where what we'll just be doing is um, someone that has an emulator on the, on the system, like myself, I do have um emulator on my laptop. And then we can do a demo, you know, they can get to ask questions, you can and tell them how to run the app on their devices that's on their phones. They will sit on Chrome and then we can can move up from there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. I think 
Yeah, dull would do, okay. Okay, so, sorry, I believe sorry. everyone um, heard what um, Isaac said. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. Since there is going to be a physical meeting today, there are a chance of getting some of these things resolved. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm not. I'm. I don't think I'm. I'm the best um, place to answer. Um, I'm the best person to answer the question. Okay, um, we'll get back to you on that, guys. Um, we'll get back to you. Surely we'll get. Just um, stay tuned um, and check your Slack um, regularly. I think there'll be updates on that platform. Yeah. So the remaining, um, the few minutes we have to end the class, do you have any question? Maybe personal question, nothing um, coding, like not debugging your stuff. Um, your app is not showing, Chrome is not opening, like not that, like generally, what, what questions do you have as regards to um, mobile development? Probably you've seen or you've heard one or two things that happens in the mobile sector or in the mobile world, and you would like to ask, yeah, you could just ask that now. I know most of you will be um, keen on um, what are job opportunities for mobile developers and all. Like, can we just have that random discussion for a few minutes? If you do have any question as regards that, but if you don't, then I think we can just end the session for this evening. Stuff fine, Michael. Yeah, 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 sure. Awesome. Yeah. Fine. All right. So, anyone mm -hmm. wants to ask question, just random question based on, on that. Um, I think questions will start coming in if we start saying the practical thing. Okay, um, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, okay, so if you would ask your question when you have, oh, I'll be doing, you can ask your question, I can see your hand. Oh. Okay, um, I watched some tutorial recently, so I saw something that. This Flutter app, we are, this, uh, that language we are trying to learn. Yes, it can be used to write an um, uh, application program. But it can be used for maybe for some financial application or e commerce application or something of sort. If you have to learn the native language of each, um, maybe Android or iOS, you have to learn their, basic, um, their native language to write all this program. Okay, um, Abia, yeah, that, that's true. There are some features, there are some things that you would need to do with um, Flutter, that's cross platform. There are some things you would want to do that it will require you to write a custom, um, um, a custom feature for yourself. That's where the knowledge of um, native comes in. Um, yeah, so for those of you that started out with um, native development, I think in the first class where I thought. I explained that you have three categories of Android mobile development, the native Android, that's Java and Kotlin, then the native iOS, that's Swift and Objective-C, and hybrid or cross-platform. Yeah, so that's very correct. You might need to do some things, some features, and then you need to write native, um, nat in a native way, as you need your knowledge of Java or Kotlin to write those things, yeah. I think that will come in later, but if you are very much comfortable with um, Flutter for now, you don't need to worry much about those things. When the time comes, you can easily switch to Kotlin and then just pick it up within um, some weeks and then you'll be fine. Yeah, uh, that's just it. Yeah. Um, another person drew, um, is raising a hand. Let me check for the question. Um, John Ike, yeah, you can ask your question. Sorry, please. My question is, you said you drop a link on how to uh, install this Flutter and then maybe connect it to Android. So that Android Studio, so that we can be using the link on Android Studio. Please don't forget to send the link. And I really need to get the slides that we'll be using since week one. 
So you can go to week three. So thank you very much. That's just my. All right, no problem. Uh, Michael will send in the slides to the Slack channel. That's the mobile development channel. We send all the slides there. We tag them week one. This um, the slides week two. And then for the link, Michael said he was going to share for you to run your app on Android Studio. I think he's going to do that. So don't, don't worry much. He's going to do that. Yeah. So Corey Day Nelson, um, Corey Daly Nelson, can you ask? And after you will take um, people. Yeah. Um, good evening. Okay, no, my question mean? is, um, um, developing on Flutter does it makes does it make your um app responsive, or you still have to make it responsive? Okay, um, development in Flutter makes your app responsive. Yeah, makes it mobile responsive. So it, it means that you just build once. You don't need to think of the you know, web guys when they are building. You think of responsiveness, like how will it run when you open that um that link on your phone or on a smaller device? Like you need to cater for all of those things. But for Flutter, you just build once. You ensure that you're padding your margins and all. You ensure that they are accurate. The moment you do that, if it is going to fit into any screen, be it tab, um yeah, tab, um iPhones, different sizes, it's going to fit in, and then you don't need to worry much. Except if you don't do them well, if you don't do um, your widgets well, if you don't arrange them well, that's when your your UI will lose scattered. But if you do it well, then the responsiveness is 100%. Like it's going to fit into any screen. Even when you run it on Chrome, that's when you run on debug mode, you run on Chrome, it's going to fit into to that size. Yeah, so that's it. I hope I've answered your question so we can take um another question. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Um, get do, sir. Favor, favor, can you just ask a question? Yeah, um, I've been saying you know several things online. I, I think I've I, I've been saying several things online concerning you know, besides the basics like maybe architecture and some other things, um, database and the rest. I don't know. Is it like before you can make an app or something? Or before you can even say maybe you want to get a job, like you have to know every of all those things first, or like you, I don't know, I don't know if I ask the question, but like you have to know everything. Okay, um, okay, um I, I would be very practical with you. You know, before you got admission to University of Lagos or any tertiary institution, um, there's always a requirement, right? You must have SSC, yeah. you must have done jam, right? And in the SSC, it means that you must have covered SS1 to SS3, or you must have covered all level topics before you can um, write jam. And once you've written jam, there's a particular score you must have before you can get admission to a particular um, department or for a course. So same thing with um, Flutter or anything tech. There's always job or there are always job requirements, like always. No job comes with oh, um, do you know Flutter? If yes, apply. No, there are always job requirements. So the thing is, you are not expected to know all before applying for a job, but there are some basic requirements that you need, to, like they are inevitable. If you don't know them, then you are not a developer. Stops like you need to be familiar with RESTful APIs, because when you build an application, it needs to talk to um, a third party, or it needs to do something for you. You want to make an e-commerce app, e application that would um, people can add items to carts, they can um, pay with their card, and all of those things. There's a database that is connected, it talks to the server, it's sending and um, receiving responses, it's sending um, um, a request to the server, is receiving and all. So all of those things are basic requirements that you must do. You must have consumed APIs, or you must have integrated APIs to one of your applications before. So if you don't have the basic requirements, you might not get any job in tech. Like they are just basic requirements. So what are the basic requirements for you to secure a job? It's not that you must know everything. Of course, um, the architecture you mentioned comes in when you start working on very large scale application, which means that the application needs to be um, it, it can be decoupled. So this one is not waiting for this one. This one is not like everything is, you can decouple your, your application and then everything works fine. So yeah, so the basic requirements is what you need to watch out for. What are the things that you must know? The basic requirements is that you must know that language very well. 
your that language is what you'll be using to write your functionalities, like your for loop, all of those things. When you need to imagine, you need to iterate, like you need to do stuff like okay, when the user needs to add an item to cut, and when they delete, when they add, like is increasing like that. So all of those things. That's one of the basic requirements. You must know how to um how to build powerful UIs. That's when you are giving a, a, a design. When a UI US guy gives you a design, you should be able to translate those designs to what users can interact with. That's another requirement. You should know some basic stuff like you know navigation, all of those things. They are just there. Yeah. So there are basic requirements that you must know or you must have before applying for a job. Yeah. So once you have those basic requirements, then there's something we call upskilling and learning on the job. So when once you get into that, that sector, then you can start to upskill. Oh, you want to talk about dependency injection, you want to talk about modularization of your application, you want to talk about app architecture, all of those things will just come in handy. Yeah. So I hope I've answered your question, Favor. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. But for now, don't bother about, oh, you need to know this, you need to know that plenty of things at a time. No, it skills. You just um, take it as it comes. Oh, you need to know this, know that, know this, know that. And once the time comes, you easily flew up. Okay, any other question before we end tonight's session? Corey Daily Nelson, you are still raising your hand. Do you want to ask a question? Hello. Yeah, yeah Ruth. What um, emulator exactly? Emulator? Yes. What is it? Okay. All right. Um, your um, emulator is a virtual device, like a virtual mobile device. By the time you run, emulator is just like a phone. Like you will see it's okay. um, pixel, different pixel. Yeah, like a phone, but it's going to appear on your screen like a phone. But it's virtual because you cannot dip your hand into the computer and claim the phone. If you see Google Pixel or M6 or something, you cannot put your hand into your system and remove the phone. So that's an emulator, it's a virtual device, like a phone. Everything that happens on your phone, like connecting to the internet. In fact, you can synchronize your Gmail to so that emulator. Your Gmail, you can download an app from Play Store, like everything, just like a phone, like a phone. That's what the emulator is. But it's connected, it has an SDK that's connected to Android Studio such that it can talk to that, um, your codes. Like you can tell it, okay, run this app that built, or to reload, or to start this, and then it happens at simultaneously. That's what an emulator is. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so I think that will be all for tonight. Since we don't have any other questions, for the updates, we'll drop all the slides so you guys can go by it because very soon we start doing projects. Very soon, you guys should prepare for that. We start doing projects like we start building real applications, not just these ones we are just saying theory, theory. Start building mobile applications and all. So and then we'll be doing some we'll be doing some um, um some other sessions on uh, when we talk about how to monetize your application, how to conceptualize ideas to turn it to mobile application and all. We'll talk about that in the long run as we proceed. Yeah. So I think um since you don't have any yes. other question. So if you give, give assignments in the first class and I didn't really about the assignment and I asked on the um channel. Oh, okay. No, I didn't give assignments. I plan to, but okay. I wanted you guys to just learn um, the intro to Flutter. And now that you have done the basics, I can just give you a, a simple assignment. But the assignment to have guide on how to int. You see int and guide. Don't worry. I would. Okay. Um, I'll walk with you on on that. Yeah. So I think that will be all for tonight. Michael, do you have um any other thing to share with them before we end the session? No, 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 I don't. All right, all right. All right, guys, Um, thank you for joining tonight's session. Thank you. We are rooting for you guys. Um, we hope that very soon you become a Flutter developer. Like, yeah, it's... Um, it's your it's, help, sir. It's, like you, like yeah. you, because we are talking like you. I yeah, really we, we really try our best. We really try our best. You know, this thing would have been much easier if we are running um physical. Yeah, it would have been much easier. But then we just have to make use of what we have. Yeah, for now. Yeah, so we are going to put in our best. Um, I will talk to other tutors and we're sure we'll put in our best so you guys can utilize these few weeks that are left and that will be left for the program. Yeah, so thanks for joining tonight's session. We'll talk on Slack. If you have a question, ask on Slack and then let's make everything um clean. Don't just 
post question here. You can use the thread. You can form a thread for asking questions. So you ask your question mm -hmm. under that thread. So the whole place does not become messy and all. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Have a good mm -hmm. night. Rest. Okay.